Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, Mikel Arteta has done his press conference before the West Ham game. We'll be diving into that later on. But in this video, we're going to be diving into some of the key points he's been actually talking about, especially the January transfer window. We'll talk about Yuri Tillemans. It looks like he's going to be signing in January, not in the summer, because a couple of clubs can actually talk to him and time down to a new contract especially clubs outside the Premier League so that is why Arsenal want to sign him in January we'll also talk about Ferran Torres we'll talk about Mikhail Modric and the likes of Facundo Torres as well in this video so hit the like button subscribe to the podcast as well we're very very close to 61,000 subscribers and let's get this video to 400 likes now first and foremost uh, Mikhail is back with the press conferences I love his press conferences these days because uh, um, they're a little bit insightful, they're a little bit um, kind of informational, and I just like reacting to them. Uh, and he said that right now our squad doesn't have any luxuries, or we don't have, uh, we cannot afford any luxuries um, of wasting any transfer windows. So he was asked whether Arsenal will be active in the January transfer window, or probably we're going to see what happened last summer when um, actually no player came in. And, you know, we, we eventually fell away. We eventually fell apart from the, uh, from the top for us. And he said, this season, this time, our squad doesn't have any luxuries to miss any transfer window. We cannot afford any luxuries to miss any transfer window. So we're going to be active and we're going to be working to sign all players that we actually want. But he, he has also said that the player has to be right, okay? So... On top of Arsenal wanting all, all, all these players, on top of all these players uh, being, uh, being linked with us, the player has to be right, according to Mikel Arteta. So in the comment section, uh, let's open the conversations. Which players do you think are right? Is it Cody Gakpo? Is it Mikhail Modric? Is it Yuri Tillemans? Um, is it Marcus Thuram? Is it Kolomuani? Which players do you feel are right for the project right about now? But that's a quite a very positive uh, stand from Mikel Arteta. Those are now two press conferences where he's actually said the same thing about the transfer window. We want to sign in players, we are short, and we will go out in the market in January, be active, and look for the right options. For me, uh, I think Arsenal will, I'll give them a lot of time. Edu, Mikel, I'll give them a, a lot of time, I'll give them a lot of patience. January is a weird market to work with, it's a weird environment um, to work in. Many players don't actually want to move, many players actually um, are not for sale, and those that are available, the prices are absolutely astronomical. You look at Mikhail Modric, over 100 million euros right now, uh, the Shakhtar is talking about. You look at Joao Felix, a very high salary and a very high transfer price, uh, which is also around 100 million euros. The likes of Danilo, um, Palmerias is still a little bit, uh, you know, stingy with selling the player, and if they sell him, they want close to 50 million euros. So, uh, with all that information, I think Mikhail and Edu deserve a lot of time, deserve ample time uh, to sign all the players they can in January. Yes, it's going to cost us because we want to bring in these players as quickly as possible let them adapt to the side uh let them you know have all these you know all these you know adaptations quickly so that we can actually use them uh to fight city in the in the transfer race but then you can never forget how difficult it is to sign players in january you can never forget uh how tricky it is to sign the right players in january but for me the only fact that Mikel, edu and stan Kroenke are all thinking in the same direction that we have to bring in players in January. It's quite fascinating. This is a team that has been so relaxed in the recent uh, January transfer window. Not even only recent, but um, all the previous January transfer windows. We've been we've been we've been non-active. We've been non-compliant. But to be honest, this time. This is a different Arsenal, and this is a very, very different January transfer winner. So I'm going to be reporting each and everything that comes up. I'll be creating a lot of content. I'll be doing a lot of updating uh, when it comes to each and every deal. So if you don't want to miss out, hit that notification bell after subscribing to the channel. Now, according to football.london, Yuri Tillemann's deal is more likely to happen in January rather than in the summer. And I'm going to explain why. So according to um, the reasoning behind their story actually makes a lot of sense is that in January, Yuri Tillemann's will have the liberty to talk to other clubs abroad out of the Premier League. Um, 
if he doesn't actually sign a new deal all right um and arsenal do not want that we don't risk we, we don't want to risk all these other clubs coming in madrid um barcelona and all these other big clubs juventus uh roma uh, probably monaco probably um you know ace uh, ace milan probably PSG as well. We don't want to risk all these other clubs coming into this deal. And that is why Arsenal are ready to beat over 20 million euros for Yuri Telemans. Now, this is a very, very big boost in terms of what the fans want. But I don't know what Mikel is thinking about this, okay? Uh, I think he's a very, very hard uh, guy with a very, very hard head. He looks at it in two perspectives. One, He's a player I want. We've monitored him, we've monitored him for uh, 12 months. And we have something uh, you know, close to 25 million euros to spend on a midfield position. But then he's a player whose contract is running down. And you know, he's almost in the same boat as, um, as Douglas Luiz at Aston Villa. So that means if I don't get Yuri Tillemans, I easily walk into the summer and get Douglas Lewis on a free, uh, all right? So, uh, look, I think the story makes a lot of sense from football.london. Um, Arsenal really don't want to get themselves into that uh, into that kind of situation where there's so many clubs fighting for him. And even if it's not that, I think he can easily sign a deal, um, he can easily sign a pre-contract with a club abroad. I don't think he can turn down Madrid. I don't think he can turn down PSG. I don't think he can turn down Juve, Roma, Napoli, uh, or even FC Barcelona. And in my opinion, if you look at how this guy actually plays, how well he, you know, he is talented um, and everything, I think all these clubs cannot actually stay away from such a deal. So Arsenal, if they want to do this deal, uh, they should do it in January. Otherwise, we're going to need a lot of convincing. We're going to need uh, to do a lot of, you know, team, a lot of talking to Yuri um, and maybe his sign-on fees are going to be higher in the summer. And also, I think the wages are going to be a little bit higher because it's going to be a competition between the big spenders, the big boys who have the money uh, to splash on his contract and, and to splash on, uh, on his wages. And Arsenal, who actually want to spend their money very, very wisely, all right? So, Football Atlanta is saying the deal is more likely to happen in January because Arsenal don't want to find them in a, uh, th themselves in a situation where Tillemans is up for grabs by many clubs. We want to take him. We've looked at him for 12 months. We are very convinced he, he is the guy. So, the last result is to sign him in January. And I'm absolutely okay with that. I think... It's the right thing to do. Whether um, you know you guys think otherwise, let me know. But I know Yuri Tillemans is the guy you want, and we're gonna be doing a live stream uh, probably today later in the evening, talking about the next Arsenal midfielder. And I know when we do that poll, Yuri Tillemans will be leading um, other midfielders by a far, by a mile. All right. So Yuri Tillemans likely in January, according to Football on London. And Mikel still insists we want to invest more money in January. We cannot afford any luxuries of wasting time. Now, um, Coloni Coloni or Coloni Coloni, the assistant manager at Shakhtar Donetsk, has come out and said Mikhail Modric has already been notified that he will be needed in training starting january the 9th that is first and foremost and then he has also said that um arsenal is a club that are, are really interested in the player that one we can no longer deny now is um is michaela modric really going to train with Shakhtar Donetsk again in my opinion he will train with Shakhtar again he will um you know i think he will have a few training sessions he might uh, you know he might even play his last games uh, for Sh for Shakhtar probably two or three games uh in the ukrainian premier league i don't know when they resume but if they do have some january games maybe two or three he might actually play them i don't think mikhailo modric is a deal that uh is uh is going to happen 10th January, 2nd January, 5th January. I don't think it happens that quickly, but I think it's a deal that is going to naturally grow, naturally, you know, develop these legs and then grow by itself, walk by itself. So what I've seen in this one is that now we have four Shakhtar, um, Shakhtar, um, uh, Shakhtar Donetsk insiders confirming 
interest from Arsenal. We also have four Shakhtar Donetsk insiders confirming that the player is on the move. The deputy manager, uh, Nicolo, uh, Carlo Nicoloni, has confirmed that. But the manager himself also talked about it. Uh, the deputy CEO, the uh, deputy president or vice president of the club talked about it. And the president or CEO himself also talked about it. And he said, we are in talks with Arsenal. We are in talks with a couple of other clubs as well to see that it happens. Maybe not in January because of the price. And many clubs are actually far away. But they want him and we are ready to listen to offers. So, uh, what I'm thinking, in my opinion, guys, is by the end of January, Shakhtar Nenistic will have sold this guy, okay? They could sell him to any club. They could sell him to any outlet. It's, it, it doesn't have to be Arsenal, but they will have sold him because they, they have all internally agreed he's going to go. He's not going to be part of us. He's going to go. So, we need to move on. We need to start moving on. And you can see in their communication... Uh, right from the top hierarchy uh, to the bottom now, all of them are saying the same thing. Arsenal want him. Clubs want him. Clubs in the Premier League want him. We want this amount of money. Um, and we are unsure whether he's going to stay. Now, if you want to 100% keep a player, like Benfica did with uh, Darwin Nunes last year, this January, um, this year, you don't, talk, you, you don't look, talk like that, right? You either shut up or... Uh, you make you make it very very consolidated and very clear that you're not willing to sell. That is not what Shakhtar are doing. They're actually doing the reverse. They are out in the public saying anyone who has 100 million euros, uh, we will actually sell to you. And literally, what they're doing here is they are calling so many clubs who actually know. Oh, Shakhtar will be going for something like 70 million euros. So they're trying to create a bidding where they're trying to create a price war. Well, um, and for me, they will die they, they will die in their own movie. In January, a price war in January, that is something I don't think is going to happen. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think you get a price war well in January. You could get it in other months. You could get it in the summer. But in January... I think it's going to be Arsenal and a few other mediocre clubs and the player is already set his mind on Arsenal. So, um, Carlo Nicoloni says uh, right now he will be back in training on 9th January. At least the club has notified him. Uh, and then uh, Arsenal want him. He says they cannot actually deny that. So, let's wait and see what's going to happen out of there. But according to a few of my sources that I've actually looked at, we also have very nice uh, very nice alternatives to Mikhailo Modric. Apart from Joao Felix, who I think is a little bit a hard deal to do, and Cody Gakpo, who loves Manchester United and who is on the top list of Manchester United in January, all right? So, in terms of uh, alternatives, we're looking at Jeremy Pino, a player we try to scout in the summer, and the deal actually didn't happen. Now, I'm quite surprised. Okay, I'm not surprised because Spain were under the influence of, uh, of, of Enrique. For me, one of the most experienced uh, managers at the World Cup and the worst manager at the World Cup still. But I'm, I'm, I'm still fascinated that Jeremy Pino didn't play and didn't get enough minutes for Spain. And I, I'm, I'm quite fascinated. I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm quite very, very fascinated, all right? Uh, but Jeremy Pino is a player Arsenal are looking at. Still very young, Spanish, has got the, uh, the dribbles in his, uh, in his feet. Um, you know, good in 1v1, 1v1 situations, a creator, and a player who can score goals. The next player is Pedro Neto, our priority for a winger last summer. That is if we fail to get Mikhailo Modric. Pedro Neto will be looked at as well. And I think this is a story that is trying to bring back memories. I don't think Arsenal will try to sign Pedro Neto because his contract actually runs down in 2027, okay? So it's a huge contract. It's a long contract. It will take a lot of time for us to buy out that contract in January. But um, sources say Pedro Neto is another player we are looking at. And the two Torres players. N number one is Ferran Torres at FC Barcelona. I've already given you my opinion on Ferran Torres. If Arsenal want to have a successful season, these are players, these are signings we actually need to, to walk away from, okay? Uh, but looks like Mikel actually understands the real value of Ferran Torres. I'll tell you one reason why I like Ferran Torres. Like, I don't like him as a player, but if there was a reason why I would like him, 
it is his ability to play down through the middle um, as, as a false nine. He actually does that very, very well. I've not seen so many players that can actually play there and do it very, very well, okay? And they're naturally not false nines or they're naturally not number nines. Um, so I think with Spain, when, when we have the exit of Alvaro Morata eventually, then Ferran Torres is going to be the guy playing down through the middle. Uh, maybe Mikel wants him for that reason. I, I can kind of smell a rat there. And Mikel wants him because Gabriel Assis is injured. If that's the reason, yeah, maybe, right? Maybe. Uh, and then the other player is Facundo Torres, the young player who actually has been absolutely fascinating for, uh, you know, for his club. And up to now, uh, Arsenal still want him, okay? There were rumors that we had actually agreed a deal um, for him and everything was advanced, but that, that was actually not true. But what I can confirm is that he's also part of the alternatives that Mikel Arteta will be looking at come January. Okay, so in terms of alternatives, we have four. Jeremy Pino, Pedro Neto, Ferran Torres, and Facundo Torres. We, uh, uh, Zaha is not part of these players. Wilfred Zaha is not part of these players. And stop, please, in the comment section. Stop asking me to do videos about Wilfred Zaha because I will simply not... I won't do videos about the Rizaha. I think he's past, he's past the age where he's going to get a big money move unless he goes to Newcastle. I don't see any other big powerhouse sign him, to be honest. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? Hit the like button. Talk to me in the comment section. See you very, very soon.